Hey pharmacist, what are the main differences between the Freestyle Libre 1, 2, 3, and the Dexcom G7? Which one is the most accurate? Is one better than the other? Let's see how these four devices stack up across several key categories. First up, flash versus continuous monitoring. The Freestyle Libre 1, now called the Freestyle Libre 14-day system, is a flash glucose monitoring system or intermittently scanned continuous glucose monitoring system, or CGM. This means the individual must manually scan their sensor to see a number and scan at least every eight hours to avoid data gaps. The Libre 2 used to be like this, but since 2023, it became a real-time CGM, meaning it provides real-time glucose readings without scanning the sensor. The Freestyle Libre 3 and the Dexcom G7 are both real-time CGMs, so glucose levels are transmitted automatically to the device via Bluetooth. Next, glucose reading frequency. Since the Libre 1 isn't a real-time CGM, users have to manually scan the sensor in order to get a reading. Both the upgraded Freestyle Libre 2 and the Libre 3 offer glucose readings every minute, whereas the G7 sends a reading to the device every five minutes. Sensor lifespan is another important factor. All the Freestyle Libres have a lifespan of 14 days, whereas the G7 lasts for 10 days with a 12-hour grace period. So you do get a few extra days with the Libres. These extra few days may be more convenient for some, or having a grace period may be more convenient for others. The lifespan is also important when an important factor to consider when calculating the cost per day for the sensors if you're looking to make that comparison. Now, let's talk about warm-up periods. All the devices need time to warm up, allowing the sensor to calibrate after being placed under the skin before glucose readings can be transmitted to the receiver. The three Libre models each have a warm-up period of 60 minutes, while the G7 has a shorter 30-minute warm-up period. A key advantage of the G7 is that its warm-up period starts immediately upon insertion with no need for app activation. In contrast for the Libres, the 60-minute warm-up period only begins after the sensor has been activated with the reader. Next up, application. I've done demos on all of these four devices and there's definitely been an evolution in the application of the Libre. For the Libre 1 and 2, the sensor applicator and the sensor itself have to be assembled together for the user. For the Libre 3 and the Dexcom G7, the applicator comes pre-assembled, hence why the boxes are so much shorter. It's just an overall easier experience with these two. The Libre sensors are only approved to be worn on the back of the arm, whereas the G7 can be worn on the lower abdomen and kids from age two to six can also wear it on the upper buttocks. Size, how do they compare? Here's a size comparison across all four devices. The Freestyle Libre 3 is the smallest and the thinnest of them all, and it didn't come with an over patch like the G7 does, um, and I found when I used it, it stayed in place quite well. I think around the 14 day mark, it did start to lose its adhesive, but I didn't have any problems and I did knock into doors and hit different things and it stayed on pretty well. On to alarms. Being a flash glucose monitoring system, the Libre 1 doesn't have the ability to provide any real time alerts for low or high blood sugar levels. The Libre 2, 3 and G7, however, all have optional alerts. They are turned on by default and the G7 has an urgent low alarm that can't be turned off. I found that the G7 had a few more extra features such as snoozing alerts, delaying the first high alert, and creating two different alert profiles, which may be beneficial for some individuals and for others cause alert fatigue. An important one, accuracy. The first thing to remember is that these CGMs measure blood sugar in the interstitial fluid, which is great because it means less finger pricking. But it's also important to remember that these devices are less accurate than a traditional glucometer and that there is a short lag time of about 20 minutes between the blood sugar levels in the blood and those in the interstitial fluid. A standard way to measure CGM accuracy is something called MARD or mean absolute relative difference. The lower the MARD, the more accurate the CGM is. And here's a comparison of the four devices. 
However, typically a CGM system with a MARD less than 10, which these have, is regarded to have good analytical performance. Lastly, additional features. The readings work by sending glucose levels via Bluetooth. The range for the Libre 2 is 20 feet or 6 meters, the Libre 3 is 33 feet or 10 meters, and the Dexcom G7 with its recent Bluetooth upgrade has increased its transmission to from 20 feet to 33 feet, just like the Libre 2. Additionally, all devices are designed to withstand water exposure during bathing, showering, or swimming. The Libre sensors are water resistant and can function as long as they're not submerged for more than three feet or one meter or kept underwater for longer than 30 minutes. The G7 is considered to be waterproof up to eight feet or 2.4 meters for up to 24 hours. In conclusion, when choosing between these CGMs, it's important to consider personal preferences and priorities such as sensor lifespan, alert customizability, and the size of the sensor. Or at the end of the day, it may simply come down to price or what's available in your country. Regardless of these differences, all of these devices offer the convenience of glucose monitoring without routine finger pricking. For a more in-depth look at these devices, feel free to check out my previous videos on all of these CGMs, and I hope you found this comparison video helpful. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye, pharmacist.